Hello again. Hello. Uh, uh, this is Rick. I'm coming to you from Key West, Florida. And I just wanted to give you a real quick, I'm going to learn to go really quick nowadays. Today the conversation is about the, uh, the, the, the quote of uh, an eye for an eye. And it also is going to extend into what's the difference between the uh, all-seeing eye of provenance and the uh, single eye or the third eye, uh, the seat of the soul. And, you know, they're two different things. You know, almost everything in our world of duality is going to be like that. But uh, uh, for the most part, uh, when someone says, you know, eye for an eye, it actually has to do with karma. You know, believe it or not, that's what's in the Bible. It's a karma. Karma, if you're going to do something terrible or stupid, you know, uh, I smoke for a good long time. Uh, uh, so, you know, my chances of getting cancer, some, having terrible health and stuff like that, you know, and losing limbs and things like that are pretty good. And and it won't be because, the, oh, I didn't ask for it, you know. But, uh, you know, and if you're an asshole, you know, you, you know you're going to, you know, be a pain in the ass in a lot of people's lives and uh, maybe a lot of people will be pain in the ass right back at you but uh, it all has to do with karma nobody's going to poke anybody out when they say if you did that everyone would go around blind because that's taking it literally and <clears throat> the last thing you want to do is take these things literally you know uh, make, they're called dark sayings on purpose because they're dark they really mean something else now this uh, all-seeing eye with providence, you know, the Illuminati eyeball, you know, they're not using the center eye. This, uh, <clears throat> this pyramid, the top of the pyramid stuff that they do, you know, these are beta symbols, you know, triangles and things like that. They, they, they take on two meanings as well. But um, in, 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 in reality, what happens is this one is actually about control, and it's and they're actually the left eyeball. Uh, the, they flip around because I think people, you know, when they upload them and put them online, they flip them around. And, and since I'm dyslexic, it screws things up. But for the most part, it's the left eye. The left eye it represents the left side of your mind, and that's the male side. That's when, you know, in the end times, men will be loving men. That's because men will will have negated and gone across, left the uh, the right side of their pain, their, or the the right side of their their consciousness out of the, their thinking. That's what it means to be a homosexual in, uh, in this. That's why it's an abomination, because the person becomes spiritually dead and you're a widow. And, and the Bible talks about, you know, woe ye, you know, Pharisees and all, you know, you know this, this religion that they push on people makes, makes uh, widows out of people. And uh, for the burdens they put on their backs, they say, they say, oh, woe to you, because uh, you neither enter in within, you neither enter within yourself, and you hinder those that try. All right. So, anyways, when you want to think about it, you know, uh, the symbolism for the all control and eyes, the thought police, they've turned it into God, the all seeing eye of God, uh, and turned him into a thought police as well. But it's really like that Satan's eye, you know, it's the left eye. <clears throat> and excuse me <clears throat> and so what happens people get that mixed up you know you see the, the sign with the eyeball in here on your hand now that is a sign for the single eye you know all these Hindu and Buddhist symbols about the eyeball are about this uh, uh, Horus uh, uh, Horus you know is really a cross section of our brain showing, you know, where God is. You know, and Horus actually represents God. Horus on the horizon is the sun. All these are about sun gods. But it's a cross section of the inside of our brain, you know, which is pretty cool shit. Um, but uh, the the pyramid that's at the top of the scheme of things is not the it's not the single eye. The single eye is actually symbol sim, symbolically the, the the it's the sixth chakra. And it becomes the uh, the seed of the soul of all things, believe it or not. It's uh, what is above, 
you know, so it's above the six chakra is above things to the lower. And uh, let's see, on top of that, there's uh, it's also known as it's the pineal gland, and this is symbolized as the as a pine cone. And so, you know, a pine cone represents something that when you set it afire, because this is just this is the state when you go up into a delta frequency, you're get, you're into fire. Uh, in the cosmology scale, that's the, the fourth uh, phase of consciousness. It's fire, the top of the mountain, you know. But this all this fire that doesn't consume you, you know, burns the dross out of you. So you know, you're saying you're going up there, and you're having the hair, the hell burnt out of you, the hell. So you, you can see that it's not have anything to do with hell, but it kills hell. It's a kryptonite. So you know, that's why they're mixing them up just to scare you. So don't. You're gonna have to learn that that ain't true. That, that the single eye can't get mixed up with all this other stuff. You gotta get a little bit more mature in the thinking. So what happens in the forest out there is that whenever a fire consumes these pine trees and stuff like that, you know, the uh, sometimes this is a type of you know of how it, how it has to you know propagate, you know, and what it means is new life. And we're talking about that once you get up there, you're renewed. It's a new life. Everyone's talking about being reborn. This is what this is what we're talking about. So when the fire burns on that and it catches, you know, heats up, it opens up, and all the little seeds in it is like pops, and all the new seeds they take off, and that's what happens to us. You know, that's the sim symbol symbolism behind the pineal gland pine cone and you'll know that whoever controls this pine cone you yourself if you control it then you control your world do you understand you control your world when you build your world when you build your house on stone now on those 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 those, those poles and things like that I don't know what they would call them for the Pope you know, and these leaders around the world, of these religious leaders, they are on the top, and they have the pine cone up there. They're, they block this off. They've scared it out of you. They are in control of the pine cone. They're in control of your world. Anyways, um, I just want to let you know that. And in the scriptures, you'll see that uh, when it comes down to the right side references, you know, and regarding it as food, is that uh, you know toss your nets to the right side of the boat and you, if you want to catch some fish you know your daily bread type of thing so you'd say like uh, okay so you drag up 153 fish that's important that's a number it comes to nine nine is a universal number for uh, for you for, for consciousness and since it has a right side reference you know that everything comes from the east, only good things and wisdom from the wind and that parted the Red Sea was a constant breeze from the east. It's a beautiful thing, so don't be afraid and understand the difference between those eyes and know what religion does. Religion literally places Jesus in the middle between the two seas and he pokes them out. Still killing them to this day. Will you let them know that Jesus is alive and well in you? Alright. Bless.